Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For today's video, I'm introducing you guys to a brand new member of our family. So the creature that I am introducing to you guys today is my brand new Vietnamese centipede. So this is the very first centipede that I have ever owned personally, but it's one that I've wanted for a very long time. Before we even get into the setup of this animal, how I care for it, and actually the, even the introduction in general, I do want to place a disclaimer that this is not an animal that I would recommend. Anyone just goes out and buys. Centipedes are venomous, and if they bite you, it is not a fun time. Different centipede species have different varying levels of potency and medical significance and the Vietnamese centipede is probably one of the most medically significant centipede bites there are. Their bites have killed people but the people that they've killed are typically people who are in poor health or elderly so if I were to get bit by the centipede for example as long as I wasn't allergic I would probably be fine. I would probably be in excruciating pain, would definitely probably need medical attention, but I would probably survive. So yeah, for that reason, I wouldn't really recommend anyone just goes out and gets one unless you know what you're getting yourself into and you know all of the precautionary measures that you need to be taking when owning something like this. I've taken a lot of measures to ensure that this thing will not escape its enclosure and also I'm not going to get bit because I'm not going to do anything stupid. But I also do have experience with other venomous creatures like my tarantulas and things that are very fast moving. So that's why I was a little bit more comfortable with owning something like this. But I just want to put that disclaimer out there. Do not go out and buy a Vietnamese centipede just on a whim. But with that being said, I do want to share my Vietnamese centipede with you guys. I think they're extremely fascinating creatures. And this probably sounds a little bit strange, but I hate centipedes. Trust me, I absolutely hate them. If there's a centipede in my house, I don't want to go anywhere near it. Like, stay away from me. But when it comes to centipedes, even spiders in general, things I'm afraid of, usually the smaller ones are more scary to me. I don't know why, but I was like, if I'm gonna get a centipede, I want the big one because it's less scary to me because I just feel like they're easier to keep track of. They're still extremely fast, but it's the same thing with tarantulas. I'm not a huge fan of small spiders but when it comes to tarantulas, I'm fine with them for whatever reason because they're big and I can just see where they are. I don't know if that really makes much sense. I felt for some reason more comfortable getting a large centipede, even though the bite is going to be worse, if anything. Maddie was not very pleased with this purchase to say the least. She was not a fan of my centipede. So she did say since I was bringing this scary creature into the house that she had to name it and Maddie decided to name the centipede Miss Kitty. The name makes it less scary, and I agree, and I really liked the name Miss Kitty, so I was like, okay, the centipede's name is Miss Kitty. I'm gonna be introducing you guys to Miss Kitty, but before we get into the actual introduction, I do wanna go into the setup and how I kind of put together Miss Kitty's enclosure. I'll show you guys how I set it up. We can introduce you to Miss Kitty, and I will also be showing you the security I have on this enclosure to ensure that Miss Kitty will not be escaping. My coldest water bottle, in case anyone is wondering, is filled with coffee because, well, caffeine addiction. I guess that's the main reason. So in here, I just have some peat moss and organic soil that I already mixed together. And then I go ahead and add some sphagnum moss. And then I also mix in some leaf litter and then just some orchid bark. And then I just mix it all together and I also added some more water to the mixture to make it more moist. And I didn't film myself doing this, but I also added springtails, which is going to help clean up any waste and take care of any potential mold issues. And then for a hide, I just put down a cork flat, and this is just going to be perfect because in the wild, they often hide under pieces of wood or rocks or they burrow in the substrate. So this is just a nice piece of wood that he can kind of crawl under. And then I also add a water dish. And then here we have Miss Kitty herself, the star of the show. So we're going to add her into the enclosure. And basically the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to set the container in the enclosure. I'm going to take off the lid and I'm going to let her crawl out at her earliest convenience. So 
So one thing I found really interesting when researching about centipedes is that there's no easy way to sex a Vietnamese centipede, mostly because obviously you don't want to get bit. And the only way to sex a Vietnamese centipede is to basically like pop their sex organs, kind of like you would with a snake, I guess. Again, I'm not like an expert on this. I've never done it. So I'm not trying to teach you how to do it or give you any ideas, but people will literally like CO2 their centipede so that it passes out temporarily. And I saw someone in a forum, they basically gassed their centipede and then held it down with a cup in case it woke up and like sex did. So I thought that was just really interesting that someone would go, that people go through that. I guess it's worth it if you're trying to breed them. Also kind of scary because imagine the centipede waking up during it somehow. The other method I saw people do was the drown and pop method, which yeah, I guess people like drown their centipede and then it becomes unconscious and then they sex it. But from what I saw, people recommend the CO2 method over that. I'm not telling anyone to go out there and drown their centipede, but I'm just saying that that's what the research that I did led me to see that that's what people do. So I just found that interesting. I don't care if Miss Kitty is a male or a female because I don't have any plans on breeding Vietnamese centipedes, but her name is Miss Kitty and she's a female in my heart. So I'm not going to be drowning her and sexing her. All right, so here we have Miss Kitty's enclosure. She's in here. She's all set up. She's been doing really well. We love Miss Kitty. I love Miss Kitty, I should say. I'm sure not a lot of people are on the same page as me right now, but hopefully one day you will be. This is the tub I keep her in. I wanted an enclosure that would be big enough for her to be able to have a decent amount of substrate for her to burrow in. From what I read, people say about four inches usually at least you want. If they want, they can burrow in the substrate. I also wanted room that she could kind of like roam around a little bit and explore and just have space to just kind of navigate around, do her thing. And she has really enjoyed exploring and just checking out all this enclosure has to offer for her. And then I also wanted something tall enough that she could have her minimum of four inches of substrate, but also have enough space to the lid that if she were to crawl up and stand pretty much on her hind legs that she would not be able to reach the lid because they can squeeze under really tight spaces and that would be a big risk of her being able to leave the enclosure. The height of this is much taller than the centipede, so even if she were to like stand on her back legs somehow and prop herself up, she still wouldn't reach the top. And they cannot climb a smooth plastic like this, so I haven't even seen her really try to climb up the top, like she'll kind of start making her way up and then she just kind of slides down and gives up. So that's not a huge worry since they don't climb the smooth plastic, but just as an extra precaution, I bought the tallest tub I could find at the store so that she couldn't even reach the lid. My next layer of security was adding clips. So there's two clips on this side. And then if we turn it around, there's another two clips right here. And then it also clips shut on both sides there. So I have these clips so that even if she somehow magically grew wings and decided to float up to the top and try to squeeze her way through, it's like pretty secure. Like the lid really isn't lifting up anymore. I, I don't know if these clips were necessary. Like I said, I really just don't see her even getting up here. This is more for my own peace of mind. So I'm like, if anything happens, because in my mind, I'm like, what if she builds a ladder out of the cork that's in her enclosure and then like creates an escape plan? Like I need a plan B. So that's what these clips were. You can go ahead and take the clips off. I got these clips from Home Depot. They were literally like 30 cents each and they're very like tight, like very tight. They squeeze very 
firmly. One thing I did want to point out is I do have cross ventilation. So there's holes poked over here on this side and then on the opposite side, there's also ventilation holes. The holes are all the way at the top because I wanted it to not be uh, somewhere where she could use them to climb up the sides. But this is just enough ventilation that there's going to be a good amount of air circulation in here. And the tub in general isn't like, it's not like it's airtight or anything. So there's still ventilation through the lid as well. But you don't want too much ventilation because they still need a decent amount of humidity. If it dries out too much in the enclosure, it can be fatal to them. But this enclosure holds its humidity very well, so I don't actually have to mist it very often anyways, which is nice, so I'm not too worried about that. One helpful tip I did see someone make in a forum is that whatever you're using to poke around in the enclosure, so for me it's like these tongs, this is what I'll use to kind of like grab the wood and lift it up if I'm looking for the centipede. You want whatever it is to be small enough that if for whatever reason the centipede decided to like latch on to the end here and start climbing up, you want to be able to just drop it in the enclosure. If I were using something really long, for example, if the centipede started to climb up it, if I were to just drop it and it like, you know, leaned up against the side like this, then the centipede could crawl up it really fast and leave the enclosure. So you want something that's short enough that as soon as your centipede starts to even like touch this, you can just drop it and it'll be flat down on the enclosure and your centipede can't use it as like a escape ladder out, if that makes sense. And again, that's just like kind of precaution you might not even think of taking, but you might even think that using something really long would be better because then your hand is farther away from the centipede, but you really don't want it to escape the enclosure because they're super fast and that's a headache you don't want to deal with. So I'm just going to go ahead and lift this up. So I'm going to give her a dubia roach and she should take it pretty much immediately. Well, Maybe not that immediately. Okay, she didn't really take it, so that's kind of lame. Hello, Miss Kitty. So then when it's time to put the tub away, put the lid on, those two latches go on, and then the clips go on. That is how we do it. And I know some people will probably just think I'm being a little bitch and that I'm just overly cautious and that's fine. Just for my own mental well-being and me being sure that she will not be able to escape. This is what I do. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are new here. Make sure you have notifications turned on so you get notified every time I upload. You can check out all my social media links. You can follow me on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. Those will all be linked down in the description below. And I will see you guys in my next video.